Jesus Christ. Glory to the Holy Spirit. Amen. Brothers and sisters, today the first Sunday after the Theophany, and before long we'll be getting the Triodion, our journey toward Great Lent with the Sunday of Zacchaeus. <coughs> On this day we read in the Gospel how John the Baptist has been arrested and imprisoned and we hear the Apostle telling us that captivity has been taken captive. Captivity has been taken captive because we've been set loose into the glorious freedom of God's children. But to be in bondage and to be in prison is not always a form of total captivity. How many people in the Soviet Union, in Romania, in these other countries where they were controlled by the godless power, even if they did not go to church on a regular basis because of external fears, yet if they had faith and prayed within their hearts, they had freedom that others in the land did not have. Perhaps even more freedom than the communists themselves had because they had freedom of the heart, freedom of the spirit, and freedom of the mind. Today, we also celebrate the memory of St. Philip, the Metropolitan of Moscow, and I think one of the greatest of saints in the Russian land. St. Philip, who came down from Solovki Monastery and was uh, elected as Metropolitan of the city of Moscow in the time of Ivan Grozny, of Ivan the Terrible. A, a, ter a great and heavy time of, of suffering and misery and pain in the Russian land. But St. Philip, with great courage, stood in the face of Ivan and tried to defend the people from this kind of uncontrolled, almost psychiatric power that Ivan had. Mass murders, irrational killings, all kinds of debauchery. And then Ivan would dress as a monk and repent and then turn around and do the same thing again. And St. Philip, defending the people against this tyranny and this power, was put in prison. And first they, Ivan had him put together with a, with a bear, which should have ripped him to pieces. But Ivan was made the more furious when the bear simply licked the feet of the saint and lay down like a lamb in his presence. And finally, when the Tsar could no longer tolerate the holiness, the courage, and the love of St. Philip, he sent Skoratov to his cell to finally kill him and get him out of the way. And yet, this light of St. Philip, like the light of John the Baptist, who was also arrested for righteousness' sake and put to death, shines upon us this day like a heavenly light. If we look at these great saints of God and see what kind of illumination, what kind of light they give to our souls and our minds, how they inspire us to follow their example, how many of them were willing ultimately to lay down their lives for the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. And yet we realize in our own time, and our own era, how many Christians have forgotten about Christ? How the gospel of Jesus Christ is left out of the preaching 
out of the teaching, out of the example of the lives of so many of our hierarchs and our priests. Let us not even concern ourselves with those who are outside the church, who preach and teach hatred and malice and fear. And never hear the words of Apostle Paul that we have not been given over in bondage to a spirit of fear. Think of St. Philip standing before the terrible and chastising him for his cruelty and his viciousness toward the people. Think what courage it took to stand before this fearsome, ferocious person who at the blink of an eye could put you to death even in the most horrible ways. And yet Philip, filled with the grace and peace of the Holy Spirit, could stand in the face of this and defend the people against such tyranny. And think of John the Baptist, knowing that the people whom he was preaching about had the power to put him to death at any moment. And yet he continued to baptize for the baptism of repentance in the waters of Jordan until he was indeed arrested and put to death. But think of the courage as an imitation of Christ who in his incarnation maintained the fullness of the love of God in his deity and had the courage to take our sins and nail them to the tree. To suffer all those things for our sake. So that we might learn that love is what makes hate foolish. So that we might learn from him the true gospel, the true meaning of all that had been revealed before and so oft misunderstood. Today we come to the Sunday after Theophany and once again we have the lesser blessing of the water to remind us again that God is the creator of all that exists. And as we said before, there can be no life without liquid water. So liquid water itself, water is a symbol of life itself. It's why we have the miracle of the Theotokos of the life-bearing spring. Because water is the ultimate thing which, without which no life can exist, and therefore it is the image of life itself. So as we sanctify this water and take this holy water home with us, we must constantly remember the God who created life from the beginning, and who provided the water that was necessary for that life. And as we bless and sanctify and hallow this water, to remember John who baptized in the Jordan to repentance, even in the face of certain death. Because he had a faith in God and in the resurrection and a knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. As everyone is sprinkled with this water and partakes of this water, let us remember again at the creation how the Holy Spirit descended upon the waters and brought forth life and how in our baptism the Holy Spirit again descended upon the waters and brought forth new life. Water is life-bearing, and water is life-sustaining, and water is a great gift from God. Let us also remember that we should be stewards and caretakers of the gifts which God has bestowed upon us, and that we all should be involved in some way in the struggle of ecology to preserve the water that we have, for soon there will be water, wars over waters. In our own lifetime, probably, we will see someone kill another person for a gallon of fresh water. Woe to us humans for what we've done with the treasures and the gifts that God has given us and bestowed upon us. Let our hearts be filled with gratitude for all those gifts. And let us turn our face toward preserving, saving, being good custodians, and having reverence for the things that God has given us. To have reverence for life, to have reverence for water, which is the thing which sustains life. 
and to take this gift of blessed and holy water with great reverence and with prayer and with deep gratitude to our Lord God and Savior Jesus Christ, remembering that every time you make use of this sanctified water, you commemorate the creation of life in the beginning. And you create, you, you, you commemorate life itself and commemorate all the gifts that our Lord has given to us. To use them with prayer, to use them with fear, to use them with caution, to use them with understanding. <coughs> that the grace of the Holy Spirit, as in the creation, will descend upon this water today and sanctify it also. So that it is not only life-bearing for our bodies, but life-bearing for our souls, for our hearts, for our conscience, for our minds. And to use it with the same reverence and respect and regard that we have for life itself. Amen. Amen.